Howdy howdy, this is Mr. Potter. What we're going to talk about in today's videos, we're going to discuss how to deal with mouse movements, mouse maneuvers. So we're going to be talking about when a mouse is moved and when a mouse is clicked. We're going to call our class Mousy. And we're going to make sure that we are on our desktop. So I'm going to leave the import statements for a little bit. We're going to have public class Mousy. We're going to extends JFrame. And we're going to implement two listeners. We're going to be implementing mouse listener. And we're going to be implementing mouse motion listener. So these are two different interfaces that we're going to be using in this class. This interface here, this mouse motion listener, is actually going to be dealing with when a mouse moves and when a mouse is being dragged. And of course the difference is the mouse moving when the mouse button is not clicked or when the mouse button is depressed. The mouse listener on the other hand will keep track of when a mouse button is clicked, in other words when it's pressed or released, and will also keep track of when a mouse enters a form and when a mouse exits a form. So although we're doing two different listeners here, they're, they're taking care of two different aspects of the mouse. The mouse listener is actually listening for clicks, as well as when a mouse is on or off a form. And a mouse motion listener is going to take care of the motion of the mouse. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of those uh, import statements real quick. So I'm going to import java.awt.mouselistener. I'm going to import java.awt.mouse motion listener and both of these are events by the way so it's java.awt.event.mouse motion listener and then we also have uh, java.awt.event.mouse event so when we write our methods for implementing the interface the arguments are all going to be mouse events and we'll talk about what that's going to involve in just a moment uh, we also need to import java.awt.container and import java.awt. and I'm going to do a flow layout here and then I'm going to do import java.awt excuse me not java javax.swing.jframe and I'm just going to import a label. So javax.swing.jlabel. Need to remember not to capitalize javax. We don't need that. All right, so I am extending JFrame and I'm implementing mouse listener and mouse motion listener. So we're going to go ahead. Oops. We're going to go ahead and do our constructor real quick. So public mousey so take care of all of our jframe stuff so we're going to go ahead and say uh, set size to 400 comma 400 we're going to set title to mousey we're going to set default close operation to exit on close and then uh, set visible to true. So I'm always doing set visible to true to be the last thing. I also want to take care of my one label. I'm going to have one label which is basically going to uh, tell me the position of the mouse or the, the information about the mouse. Anytime any of our mouse events triggers, I want to reflect that on this label. So I'm going to say jlabel label. And then we're going to go ahead and initialize and set up the label. So I'm going to say label gets new J label. And I'm going to start off with nothing in the J label. I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually let's set up the J label like we did before. I want it to be empty. And I'm going to do with J label dot center because center aligned will look a little bit better on our thing. Um, I'm going to say container pane gets new, excuse me, not new, this dot get content pane. And then I'm going to say pane gets pane dot set layout to a new flow layout. And pane dot add label. So 
that actually takes care of our J frame. It's a very simple frame. What's going to be involved is dealing with all of these listening events. So the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, this dot add listener. Excuse me, I should say uh, yeah, I want to say this dot add listener this because I want to add a mouse listener to this, and we'll we'll talk a little bit more about what's involved there. So. In order to implement a mouse listener, there are five methods. So the first method we're going to have is mouse pressed. So public void mouse pressed. And this is going to be mouse event E. So for our mouse pressed, all I want to do is I want to take my label and set text to mouse pressed at plus, and I'm going to actually do the coordinates. So what I can do is I can access the mouse event E. So I can say that int x gets E dot get x. And this is going to get the x coordinate of the mouse. And int y gets E dot get y. And that's going to get the y coordinate of the mouse. So we're going to have the mouse event, and this is going to be concatenation with x plus a comma space and then plus y and close parentheses. So and then close parentheses, close quotes, close parentheses and semicolon. All right, so I'm actually going to copy this method because there are five methods, but I actually want them all to kind of do the same thing. So our next method that we have is going to be public void mouse released. And I'm going to say mouse released at those coordinates. Then we're going to have mouse clicked. Now keep in mind the difference between a press and release and a click is going to be the timing of it. And I'm going to illustrate that in, uh, in this uh, program here. So I'm going to say mouse clicked at. And then we have two other methods we have, uh, public void mouse entered with a mouse event E. And this basically means that our mouse has entered the form. So we could say label.setText mouse entered form. And then we can say public void mouse exited with a mouse event E, and we can say label.setText mouse exited form. So this allows me to keep track of where the mouse is at a particular point. Somehow I ended up with an extra brace. And these are the five methods that we need for our mouse listener. So now I need to talk about the two methods we need uh, for our mouse motion listener. So the two methods that we have for a mouse motion listener is going to be public void mouse moved with a mouse event, excuse me, yeah, mouse moved with a mouse event E, and we're going to say label dot set text mouse moved to, and I'm going to have to get those x and y coordinates like I did before. So I'm going to open parentheses, concatenate an x, open my quotes, comma, space, concatenate a y, open quotes for the close parentheses, close quotes for the parentheses, close my parentheses, semicolon. So I'm going to say int x gets e dot get x, and int y gets e dot get y. And my mouse dragged is going to be the same way. So I'm going to copy this and paste it. So this is going to be mouse dragged with mouse event E. Now, going back up to what I had here, I had add listener. Remember, we talked about add action listener. So I actually want to add mouse listener this. 
and I want to say this dot add mouse motion listener listener this. And so this is going to allow me to add this. I may need to change this to pain. As a matter of fact, I think I need to change it to pain. And we'll see if I do in just a moment. Um, so let's try and run this and see if this was. Let's compile it first. That works fine. And so if we run this, uh, yeah, I do need a constructor though. That would be so helpful. So public, static, void, main, string, args, and we're just going to go ahead and create a new mousey. Mousey M gets new mousey. Alright, so here's our graphic, and as soon as I move my mouse onto the form, notice that it's telling me that my mouse has been moved, and it's telling me the x-coordinate of where my mouse is at any particular location. Now, what's important to notice is that as I go from left to right, my x-coordinate changes. Notice my x-coordinate is doing most of the changes here. I'm trying to keep my y pretty constant. As I move up or down, my y is going to decrease as I go up. I've got the upper left-hand corner of this form, which is 0, 0. Right there is 0, 0. And if I go all the way down to the bottom right-hand corner of the form, this bottom right-hand gray corner is not my 400, 400, though. It's only 380, 359. Um, as soon as I leave the gray area, I get the mouse exited the form, and I'm trying to see if I can get it in, just barely in, so hard. Yeah, the thing is, as soon as I hit the enter, it's going to automatically trigger to the mouse moved. Now, if I click, but I've got pressed and clicked, and then I can also do uh, released. Keep in mind that pressing and clicked and released end up doing the same thing. But if I hold the mouse button down and then move my mouse, it's not going to give me the dragged. It's just going to give me the mouse moved. Now there's one other thing that I want to put in here is this, um, I want to go to this mouse clicked. I want to do one other event in here. I'm going to say uh, int b gets e dot get button. And remember that most mice have multiple buttons. So if I concatenate with a B, then it should tell me which mouse button we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and run this again. So I'm going to put my mouse in here. I'm going to click with my left mouse button. And notice my left mouse button is button 1. I'm going to do it with my right mouse button. And my right mouse button is button 3. And if I do the center mouse button, center mouse button is button 2. So if you have a three button mouse then I'm going to see button 1 and button 3 and this is how I can tell the difference between a left mouse click and a right mouse click. So I can keep track of which mouse button is being clicked at a particular time. I can keep track of mouse motions and now that I have the ability to deal with mouse motions I can also deal with manipulating objects on a form using a mouse and that's really the target of our next video. So, once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.